welcome to 84 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. I am Merciful Ajinomo. Intelligence agencies believe the Ukrainian plane carrying 176 passengers and crew on board was downed by a surface to air missile fired by Iran. Speculations are that the incident that left all 176 passengers dead took place after Iran launched missiles that hit two air bases of the U.S. forces in Iraq. United States intelligence claims its satellite detected two surface-to-air missiles launches shortly before the plane exploded. It quoted a source as saying that it appears missile component were found near the crash site. But in a reaction, Iran's Civil Aviation Authority said the assertion by the U.S. is untrue. The Ukrainian Airlines jet which crashed this Wednesday in Iran robbed some universities in Canada of their brightest professors and researchers. According to Reuters, the plane which was headed to Kiev crashed shortly after takeoff from Tehran, killing all 176 passengers on board, amongst who were professors, researchers and graduate students of Canadian universities. According to the Vice Chancellor of the University of Alberta, Professor David Topin, the institution lost 10 faculty members, postgraduate students and alumni in the crash. Also, Professor Neda Magbule of the University of Toronto that recorded four victims said among the victims were the smartest researchers in the world. Nigeria's Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Richard Adebayo, says the ministry will partner with Dangote Group to set up a foreign trade academy. Adebayo made this known in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, during a visit by the chairman of the Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote. According to the minister, the organization has had working trade offices, but they lack the required level of training and urges the Dangote Group to join hands with the ministry to develop the academy. Dangote reacting to this said the company would continue to invest in the Nigerian economy, adding that it is the right thing to do. We have very, very good and strong and hardworking trade offices within our ministry. And we have decided that it is only fair because we found out that uh, they lack capacity uh, uh, training. So we want to beef up their capacity. So we decided that this ministry is going to set up a foreign trade academy where we will send our people for training to build up the capacity. And we would really would appreciate it if you could join with us to be able to develop this academy. Uh, we are aware of what you have done in other institutions, for instance, the Dangote Business School in the Bayero University in Kano, and such things all over the country. Yes. Yeah. So we really would appreciate it if you would partner with us and join hands with us to be able to set up this foreign trade academy. In terms of industrialization, I think we are leading at the moment, and we will continue to now invest. We are investing because I think the policies are right. But you know, policies can also be right, but then you have wrong implementers of policies. But what we have seen now, we have the right people to man this ministry and make sure that yes, obviously yes, as investors we always have complaints. But today, as we speak, we really don't have any complaint at all. Nigeria's National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons say it will continue to support and improve the livelihood of victims of displacement in the nation. Senator Bashir Mohammed, Federal Commissioner in the Commission, said this in Abuja at a party news briefing for Antonio Kanhandula, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees Representative to Nigeria. Mohammed also commended Antonio for his positive impact on the lives of refugees, asylum seekers, and internally displaced persons in the country. According to him, the UNHCR, through the strengthening protection and the creation of livelihood interventions in northeastern Nigeria, assisted IDPs to regain dignified existence. The Nigerian Communication Commission hosted the Swedish ambassador to ECOWAS, Ghana, Cameroon, and Nigeria, Carl Grants, at its headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. Professor Umar Dambata, the Commission's Executive Vice Chairman, noted at the meeting with the Swedish Ambassador, commended the Swedish ICT Capacity Development Program in emerging regions. Professor Dambata revealed that the Swedish Post and Telecom Authority had earlier trained some Nigerians. 
Prospective applicants for the National Identity Card number in Nigeria are complaining about the slow and tedious enrollment process. For some time now, it is now common practice to see multitude of applicants at enrollment centers across the country seeking to obtain their National Identity Card number. Hard hit are applicants seeking admission into higher institutions, tripping to registration centers to obtain the identity card number since it became a major requirement admission seekers who desire to write the 2020 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination. AD4 TV radio correspondent who visited the National Identity Management Commission headquarters observed that the multitude are mostly prospective applicants trying to beat the February 17th deadline. The head of delegation of the International Committee of the Red Cross in Nigeria, Eloy Filian, in Abuja said the Red Cross has treated 10 wounded patients from the recent Boko Haram attack in Mangono, Borno State, Northeast Nigeria. According to Eloy, the patients are being treated at the International Committee of the Red Cross Surgical Ward at the Meduguri Specialist Hospital and that the surgeons have operated on the most critically wounded victims. You're watching AD4 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Buja, Nigeria's federal capital. We're going to share break now and most of when we return this day. AD4 TV Radio, we focus on education with emphasis on research and innovation, science and technology, women and girl child education, children, health, youths and sports, socio-political and economic reforms, security, environment, entrepreneurship and entertainment. We'll give you information at your fingertips. Learn on the go. Follow AD4 TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. AD4 TV Radio. Reliable and credible. We love you, AD4 TV Radio. Many thanks for staying tuned. The Director General of Nigeria National Council of Art and Craft, Olusha Gurosewe, has been sentenced to prison by a federal high court in Abuja, Nigeria, for contempt of court. The court order was made on the 15th of December 2017, restraining the National Council of Arts and Culture from demolishing and evicting traders from the Abuja Art and Craft Village. Delivering the judgment, the presiding judge, Jude Okeke, described Ronsewe's action as highly contemptuous, adding that the court sentence will serve as a lesson to other people in position of power. Amnesty International says that Nigerian authorities have failed to protect people from attacks and intimidation by violent gangs leading to loss of lives in some communities across River State, South South Nigeria. The director of Amnesty International Nigeria, Osai Ojigo, disclosed this in a statement. She said the failure of bringing those responsible for those horrific crimes to justice have allowed a climate of impunity to fuel further violence. According to the organization, at least 60 people were killed in 2019 in various communities of River State, Nigeria, with the majority of the atrocities taking place in Kana and Gukana local government areas. Medical researchers from the Beijing Tiantan Hospital and Beijing Institute of Technology in China have successfully conducted the country's first robot-assisted brain angiography. Angiography is an X-ray examining technique that reveals the condition of major blood vessels in the brain, usually exposing medical staff to radiation throughout the surgery. The doctors accurately used Lubin, China's self-developed surgery robot, to perform a brain angiography surgery on female patient. Following the success of the surgery, the robot will soon be applied in other complicated clinical procedures. In the genes of Kimmers and Oppington areas of northern Cape Province in South Africa have issued a 12-hour ultimatum to Nigerians and other foreign nationals to vacate their communities. The president of Nigeria Union in South Africa, Aditola Ulubajo, disclosed this in a statement. According to him, the development is sequel to a disagreement between a police officer and a Nigerian. He said the Nigerian and indigen of Abakaliki in Eboin State, southeast Nigeria, allegedly stabbed the police officer Niko Visagi to death during a disagreement. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, representative to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Antonio Kahandula, has commended the Nigerian government on its handling of Cameroonian refugees in Nigeria. Kanhandula made the commendation at a joint valedictory press conference by the United Nations High Commission and the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons in Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. 
He noted that the Nigeria's reception and treatment of refugees ranks the best in Africa. Sequel to the deadly gas explosion in Kaduna State, southwest Nigeria, calls for necessary safety measures by gas dealers have intensified. The apex body of standardization in Nigeria, Standard Organization of Nigeria, is urging consumers to be on the lookout for substandard LPG cylinders and the need to take precautions while patronizing cooking gas outlets. In an exclusive interview with AD4 TV radio correspondent, the public relations officer of the Standard Organization of Nigeria, Bola Fashina, speaks on the need for the public to imbibe gas safety measures to avoid hazards linked to it. In Nigeria, the lifespan of an LPG cylinder is 15 years. But within those 15 years, the cylinder must be requalified every five years. That is twice. After it has been made, five years after that, it must be requalified and continue to be used. It will then be requalified again after 10 years. At the end of the 15-year period, that cylinder is supposed to be withdrawn from circulation. Any cylinder that you find you know, uh, inscriptions on, maybe painted, do not buy. They have to be inscribed such that they cannot be cleaned off. They must be inscribed. The date of manufacture, the, 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 the uh, uh, country of origin, and all of those, the quality marks, all must be embossed such that they are not easy to clean. You are not supposed to use your phone in the kitchen. You are not supposed to use your phone in the kitchen. It's not safe. You want to go to the kitchen, keep your phone outside. That's it on AD4 TV radio news update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. Don't forget you can join the conversation on our website at www.ad4tvradio.com. You can also like and subscribe to our YouTube page at AD4 TV Radio. Follow us on our social media handles at AD4 TV Radio on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Many thanks for watching. I am Merciful Ajinomo.